Here's the first story in a series of uh, comic literature, and uh, it's one I wrote myself. It's called Boy Racer Rock and Roll. A story mailed to a Chinese toy factory, which kindly sent me a do it yourself Fu Yong Hai kitchenette to compensate for what I've been through, proving that even Chinese experts can get hold of the wrong end of the stick. Chopstick. Dear sirs and assorted madams, please allow me to share with you the mild ordeal I went through while attempting to assemble the various minuscule parts of your spectacular racing car, the Taurus Speed Champ, surely one of your deservedly best-selling toys. There's no doubt in my mind that your company aims to entertain its customers aged eight and above to the best of its ability, and I truly appreciate the warning supplied free of charge. Having been recommended this particular toy as a most relaxing way to spend a drizzly afternoon, I started assembling the parts of what was meant to emerge as item number YME 116010 at 12 noon sharp. My son, A, aged four, kept pointing excitedly at the bright red finish of the vehicle in the picture, so eerily reminiscent of the unfortunate Nicky Lauder's face after his legendary crash way back when. As the person you so tactfully label supervising adult in charge, I peruse the section preceding the user's manual entitled Caution. I couldn't help but chuckle at the following piece of advice. Two, when assembling this kit, tools including knives are used. Extra cars should be taken to personal injury. Anticipating an extended civil war in a household that regularly roots for the likes of Mr. McMahon, performing their antics in the wrestling ring, I decided to simply ignore this particular hint and carry on, suspecting a typo over a steaming bowl of Fu Yong Hai was only to be expected. While assembling the racer body, I managed to pass the preliminary test involving steps one and two with flying colors. That's to say, I did so by wickedly delegating the job to my daughter, the nimble-fingered B, aged nine at the time. Step three featured the use of both eyelets and grease, and daunting measurements recalling the heyday of Jane Mansfield, who wasn't decapitated, but merely lost her wig in that fatal car crash. Having lost her head to a Hungarian bodybuilder, she ordered along with another well-done steak at a nightclub that shall remain unnamed. But let us not digress or anticipate the shape of things to come. I yelled it was high time a professional gladiator stepped in, lugubriously droning, Taurustori te salutan, those about to assemble the Taurus salute thee, to the grinning toy Caesars of Guangdong, and environs. Having sensibly disposed of the packaging material, I was unfortunately unable to identify the parts you so confidently label A1, A5, and B1, let alone the M2 times 6 step screws. The final straw came in the shape of the mindlessly cheerful interjection, snap, twice mentioned under step 5 which I had reached by conveniently skipping step four as being too tricky. A surreptitious glance at step six confirmed my worst fears. An untraceable white pinion was to be attached to either a Shenzhou motor or to the rather expensive looking lightning speed motor. The punchline was priceless on this oppressively overcast Sunday. Purchase separately sold all the high performance motor this instant, but my daughter serenely reassured me that the latter had been supplied as a Christmas bonus by an Oriental Samaritan. Leaving the oblique instruction pressed to the bottom to experts in the field of nautical English of the late 17th century, I pondered over the exact and unequivocal meaning of gear ratio 4 to 2 to 1 with all individual parts of the confounded kit now firmly glued to ten fingertips for a fortnight. 26T gear, the only actual wheel I was able to spot during this 250 minute session, miraculously snapped into place 
aided by a generous dollop of grease that I'd absentmindedly recycled to polish the lenses and frame of my brand new C1881 piece of face furniture. Just for larks, my son tried on these gluten specks. Although blessed with 2020 vision from birth, the tiny top might be condemned to wear this pair for the rest of his life, unless you'd be so kind as to di dispatch the handy Taurus Boy Racer Grease Thinner without delay. My beloved wife T flitted by, quipping that my degree in American literature, sarcastically enunciating the capital letters, obviously did not extend to any technical expertise whatsoever. But I was determined to test the on-off switch properly. This activity reduced me to a writhing voodoo busker performing his last tribute to Jimi Hendrix before an enthralled audience. To recover from the considerable shock, I played an old Queen tape and out blasted the rock ballad I'm in love with my car, penned by drummer Roger Meadows Taylor, whose name is an anagram for great words or melody as I'm sure you'd already figured out while inventing fireworks out there. Told my girl I had to forget her, rather buy me a new carburetor. So she made tracks saying this is the end now. Cars don't talk back, they're just four-wheeled friends now. However, once I'd squeezed the 34T gear and the E1 spacer into the frame by Schwarzenegger-esque force, it was just a matter of putting the icing on the cake by snapping number 12 and off race the car in the inevitable direction of the gossip that runs a corner shop at the end of our alley. This sitting duck might have derived some medical benefit from the advice given under 6. To stop the car from running, you may either use your hand with a thick cloth and place your plan sick, facing where the car will arrive and catch the car tightly upon contact. As the plastic surgeon duly consulted confirmed, contact must surely rank as the euphemism of the millennium when it comes to describing the salto mortale our well-meaning neighbour made while frantically trying to catch tightly her lawful husband's moustache in order to escape the imminent pulverisation of her right ankle by the aforementioned Taurus speed champ. The slogan writ in large looming letters on your product's wrapper riding on time with no limit, has meanwhile acquired an unsuspected resonance for the temporarily wheelchair-bound lady in question. As one who has shown sufficient common sense to ignore a former US president's bit of advice about wearing wet socks beneath an electric blanket while honeymooning, I tend to regard myself as a predominantly rational being. I may not know much, but I know what I like, and when all is said and done and the last loop plucked, I must hand it to your creative team at Guangdong Toy Factory. Rarely have I derived so much pleasure from spending 30,000 Indonesian rupiah, equivalent to three dollars, so long may the bright red boy racer roll around. Thank you very much indeed for your attention and best wishes to all at your blessed factory. Yours respectfully, The Jester.